Hey, welcome back to Bear Squid. On this channel, we simplify educational tech using the iPad. Now, in today's video, I'm going to show you why you should use the iPad when you're dealing with Google Meet. Now, the simple reason is the Apple Pencil. To start this off, all I want you to do is go to Safari and type in Google Meet. And as long as you're signed in, like here in the top corner, then the first link will take you to your Google Meets uh, account. Now here, what you can do is you can enter a code or you can start a new meeting. When you click on start a new meeting, you get three options. Get a meeting link to share, start an instant meeting or schedule in Google Calendar. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go straight ahead and we're going to start an instant meeting. This is going to ask you then, uh, do you want Google Meet to have access to the microphone and the camera? Go ahead and say allow. And then this notification will get dismissed on its own. Right. I don't know why it's sideways. So what we'll do is we'll just um, pick this up and rotate it. And that should put it straight. OK, now uh, we have an option to present or to join the meeting. Of course, we're going to go ahead and join the meeting. But before we do anything, I just want to show you here that you have your microphone and your video on. Now you could toggle these on or off entirely up to you how you want to set it. OK, and if you click on more options, you can see um, some things about the settings. Now with the settings, you could go ahead and sort your uh, microphone and your speaker defaults. Now I tend to use this, which is my um, AirPods Pro. I like these because they um, are noise cancelling. They cancel out the, the uh, background noise for me and also they give nice clarity for my students. Uh, you could use something as simple as this. Now this is not iPad Pro. Uh, I can't plug this in. I don't have a 3.5mm jack. Okay, so I'm okay with that. Uh, video settings. Now this is great because if you have a high speed internet, you can go ahead and do high definition. Okay, 720p, uh, depending on what your camera resolution provides you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stay with uh, standard definition. Remember, if your students have a low bandwidth, okay, they have low internet quality, better to keep this at 360p. Okay, and the receiving resolution, you can also change that um, to audio only standard, uh, one video at a time, high definition, or just the default, which is um, 360p. Okay, so let's go ahead and say done with that. General, uh, really nothing there in general, just about uh, additional diagnostic reports. So we're going to leave that as it is and press on done. Now what we're going to do is we're happy with this. You can see that the microphone's on. You can see this little toggle running up and down, this little audio bar. OK, and we're going to go ahead and join this meeting. Now, it gives you the meeting link so you can go ahead and copy this uh, or you could add people. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this for now and that's copied in my link. So I'm going to uh, cross that off. What I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to go ahead and go to my Google Classroom and paste that in. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to go here and type in Google Classroom. And since I'm already signed in here anyway, if the first link that I click on will take me to my Google Classroom. So I'm going to choose a class that I want to share that link with. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go to tutorial. And in the stream is where I'm going to post it here. So I'm going to type in, please join me on Google Meet. Oh, Meet, Meet. And then what I can do is I can just go ahead and paste the link there. But what I like to do is I go to add and then go to link and then paste in the link here. Now what this gives is a very nice icon. Let me just post that. It gives a nice actionable click here. So students can't miss this. OK, uh, they'll see this logo and they say, hey, you know what? There's a class in session. So go and join the class video meeting. That's nice to do. OK, just go ahead and share that. Uh, once you do this, students will get a, an email in their inbox and they'll go ahead and join that meeting. Let's go back to the meeting and let me show you a few more things here. Uh, if you've missed the meeting's details, you didn't get them, you can always go down here in the left hand corner and click on that to get the meeting details here. OK, you go uh, get the meeting details from there. A super rich feature for Google Meet is turn on captions. Now you can go down here and turn on captions. That's going to give a transcription of what you're saying. And that's really important because sometimes when students are in a noisy environment, uh, they can't really put a, a speaker on or um, hear the audio, what you're, you know, what the host is saying or what other participants are saying. So it's very good for them to uh, just follow through the conversation by reading through the captions. Now, in addition, it's an accessibility feature as well. So um, it, it's good for everyone to have that available to them. Now, as a host, you should be aware of this. Uh, depending on who your participants are, you may need to turn on access accessibilities by turning on captions. For now, I'm just going to turn it off. Really, that's where the fun stops because using the web version, if I go down here to present my screen on the iPad and then I go to 
present the entire screen, it gives us an error message. It says, sorry, an error occurred while screen sharing. So we're gonna go ahead and dismiss that. The issue is on the web version of um, the app, on uh, the iPad, it doesn't work. It doesn't allow you to uh, share the screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and terminate the call. I'm gonna leave the call there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our app store and download Google Meet. So now just click on the Google Meet app and then it's gonna give you a welcome message, press on continue. It's gonna say, do you want to allow the camera access and then the microphone access and say yes to both of these. And then let's go ahead and sign in. So sign in with the account that you're gonna use, of course. And then this is the version of the app. Now, let's go ahead and um, start a new meeting. Of course, you can see that your microphone and your uh, video are on, okay? You can toggle these on and off as you like. Uh, let's go ahead and start that new meeting. So again, the three uh, same commands are there. You wanna get a meeting link. Do you want to share a meeting link? Do you want to start an instant meeting or do you want to schedule it? Let's go ahead and do that instant meeting. Uh, this is going to kick off the meeting right here. Uh, and there's your share code again, of course. You can send out the invite or you can just copy that. That's copied in my clipboard. I could go ahead and share that in my Google Classroom. Now, so here's a few things I want to show you. Yeah, uh, In the chat feature, what's nice about the iPad is as I'm doing a chat here, okay, let's just say uh, hello, you can see that emojis are come along as well. So these suggested emojis are here, press enter, you can see that's very nice. Now if you are gonna use emojis with your classes, then make sure you have some type of communication policy because students can get carried away with sending out too many emojis. Some of them can be quite mean. So um, have a trust uh, policy or a trust protocol in place uh, if you're gonna be using emojis, okay? Students can get a bit carried away with those. So anyway, um, here's another feature that I'm gonna show you. So let's say you're, I don't know, let's say party for example, and then you get this, uh, emoji here, you might wanna send that. Maybe what if you want to send a different emoji and not that particular one? So hold down the arrow here, and then click on the globe, and then select emojis. Here you get your whole list of emojis, and as you're typing away, you can select whatever emoji you wanna use, okay? So I can say, turn on your uh, turn on your mic, okay, or your speaker, and I could go ahead, go ahead here and look for an emoji that would be relevant to that, um, that instruction. Uh, and of course, there, I think there is a speaker one here, isn't there? There's a mic or a speaker. Yeah, here we go, here, turning the mic. So, that's that, okay? Now, another good feature about the iPad is you could pinch, okay, the keyboard, and then that would minimize the keyboard, and then you can go ahead and float this wherever you want. Oops, you can float this wherever you want, and that sort of uh, gives you a bit more real estate, okay? So let's just minimize that and then you can float this around. And that's really nice. I'm sending here a bicycle. I don't know why I clicked on a bicycle. Uh, maybe we click on a tractor now and send that. So that's a very power tip that you can do that. Uh, this is a live uh, call, of course. There's no one here in my meeting. If I just go to my participants, uh, here we go. Uh, what I can do is I can pin participants on the home screen. And that will allow me to always see the video feed of a participant that I pin. Maybe I'm uh, checking on someone uh, and I wanna help them specifically. Maybe they, I've given them a task to do and I want to see that they're doing it. I can pin them on the home screen. I think you can also uh, um, evict people from here or put them on silent, okay? So there are a few options. I don't have anyone here in my meeting to show you that, but those features are available. Now, uh, what, what do I really want to show you? So if you click on the three dots there, we can switch the camera, not that I would want to switch the camera right now, but if you did have a whiteboard behind you, you could switch the camera and present uh, something in the back, okay? Present something in the back. Um, maybe if you had a whiteboard or you want to go walk over there, uh, you could do that. So let's go ahead and switch this camera back, okay? Uh, of course, with the, uh, the app version, you can also turn on uh, captions. Of course, again, remember, this is very important for accessibility students, okay? So students that uh, don't have access, um, uh, can't turn on the speakers or they're in a noisy environment, or otherwise they can uh, t uh, follow you through uh, reading the captions, okay? That's quite an important feature. So let's go ahead and see what else we can explore here. There's something I wanna show you here. Now, because we are on the app version, we can go ahead and present our screen. So as we present our screen, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna start your screen broadcast? We're gonna say yes, but it says here, everything on your screen, including notifications, will be recorded. Enable do not disturb to prevent unexpected notifications. So you can go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's start our broadcast. And that's gonna start the broadcast in three, two, one, gives you a countdown. And if you click away from that, your broadcast is gonna start uh, imminently. So it says here, you're presenting to everyone. Uh, you can go ahead and click on stop presenting. <laughs> I don't wanna stop presenting. 
what's brilliant here is that the audio is still picking up okay um, the transcription of what you're saying and let's do a split screen because remember I am presenting now so whatever I show on my screen would be presented here and let's open up a new um, uh, what do you call this a new note and now from here I can uh, present my information okay so students can see this they can see both parts of your screen what's good about this is you still have interaction with uh, your messages okay so I could give an, uh, a sort of uh, a message here I could send out a message and say hey Sarah can you do Sarah please complete question two okay uh, of course there isn't a question two here I could draw up a question two and write something there however what I like to use is I like to use good notes okay and in good notes uh, I've got something open here and now I can show I can annotate uh, on top of my worksheet okay and actually this seems too big of a split screen so I'm gonna go ahead and drag that to a, um, a sort of 25 75 uh, ratio here and now I've got my um, uh, I've got my screen here and I can start annotating. So I can tell my participants, hey guys, can you complete questions four, six and eight uh, and we'll see how we get on. And while we're doing that, you, they can still see the transcription of my talking, okay? And also I can put a message here and say, hey, um, just complete, please complete uh, question eight. Okay, and forget the rest of them. And then I'm gonna show them working out. So I could, I could say, hey, you know what, uh, Jason, if you can do question uh, four, uh, and I can highlight here, I can use my laser pointer and I could go ahead and do my uh, annotations here. So I'm going to get rid of the N, I'm going to minus N or what I could have done, uh, I'm going to take the minus 9 and plus it on to the left hand side and so on and so forth. So we can uh, obviously give instruction here uh, while you're on Google Meet. So I really like this. Now here's a super power tip and I've shown this in a previous video okay and I'm going to show you again the problem is that in Google Meet you can't present a live feed of your video plus your annotations uh, and see a feed for the students you can't do that okay I, I don't think you can do that in any app apart from zoom when you're using the zoom whiteboard okay you can use the whiteboard and you can have a live feed um, of your own uh, picture a picture in picture okay of your camera and your um, uh, live screen you can check that video out I've done a video on that on, on zoom that's great but here I'm going to show you a super tip okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Safari and I'm going to hold it in the middle here so it's, it becomes a slider app and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a new tab okay I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to type in um, webcam test okay if you've seen that video you're familiar with this uh, go to online mic test and click on this that's going to bring up a uh, web page here and start this allow access and then go on full screen and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this over here onto this side okay and now what the students can see is they can see my annotations so I can say hey this is x it's a variable blah 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 I could do my writing here they can see a live feed of uh, my actual image and I can still continue to communicate with them on the messages okay so I can still continue to say hey hey um, Tom what did you get for question six give me your feedback uh, of course, I can keep on captions if I wanted to, so they can uh, see the captions. There's a lot going on in the screen. What you can do time to time is you can just swipe, slide over and get rid of that camera uh, and obviously bring it back. Uh, I don't know why it comes upside down when you bring it back, but let's just X that out and then go full screen again. Uh, so you can have a live camera. You can do your annotations and share your screen as well as, um, you know, broadcast from... Um, uh, your Google Meet session, okay? And of course, I could be interacting with my participants here. Uh, I could put people on mute. I could pin uh, uh, participants. I could go to messages. Uh, of course, I can go here and I can continue to share out uh, my message as well, okay? My meeting um, link here. Okay, now just bear in mind, uh, the way I've got it set up is because I'm right-handed. I can continue to write on the screen and it's not going to block the camera. You know, <laughs> we're not at a point where the iPad's camera is on the top where we're supposed to be. We're still on the side here, yeah? So um, it doesn't block here if, you know, because I'm right-handed. And just make sure to look at the camera so your participants don't feel awkward when you're, when you're addressing them, when you're talking to them. This orientation also works if you're left-handed, okay? So if you keep your notes on your right-hand side, if you lean over, you're not blocking the camera. So this is brilliant. What I might suggest is just move this, um, if you're going to do the camera feed, move that to uh, the left-hand side so you can continue to be writing here with your left hand and looking at the camera with um, 
uh, with this live feed here. Now this live feed isn't necessary. I've just got it there uh, as you know an example of doing a live feed. I'm just gonna get rid of that there. Uh, so this is good enough to be honest. You've got your messages. Uh, you can type in here with your messages. Uh, of course you can have your emojis as well. So if I click on this and I bring my emojis, I can pinch this and I've got my e emojis right here. Okay, and I can select my emojis. Way that was, I'm gonna send out a traffic light to you guys. You need to, uh, you need to um, give me some feedback. So anyway, that's what this is. I'm gonna go over here. Uh, you might be asking, hey, why didn't you just have your camera here? Well, the issue with the camera, and I'll show you here, is you can use the camera only when me is on the screen by itself. You cannot use the live feed, the camera, while you have something in split screen. Even if you have it as a slide over, it won't work. In fact, uh, this option is quite glitchy because look at this, yeah? Even if I get rid of, even if I get rid of this, uh, try to put on my camera. Oh, it's trying to come on. Like I said, it's glitchy, yeah? So um, I hope uh, Google update this by the time we're fully using this. But um, for the most part, let me just uh, quickly turn that off because it's uh, getting a bit buggy. Okay, let's end this meeting here just by pressing on uh, the hang up. So yeah, let's end it. And uh, let's get out of that. Let me just bring my camera feed here. Okay, so that was uh, the tutorial on Google Meet on the iPad. I think it's very powerful, especially using the Apple Pencil, you're allowed to annotate uh, and show students. That's quite important because students, um, in this you know, frustration of the pandemic and being at home doing distance learning, it's quite frustrating for you just to send out something like a Google, Google slide or a presentation PowerPoint. Uh, because it's not as dynamic, it's quite static sending out um, you know, something like a PowerPoint because the, students don't have that dynamic feed, you know, as if someone's supporting them. So doing handwritten notes in a live demonstration is, it's calming, it's settling, students feel more uh, akin to, you know, like a, a usual traditional classroom setup. Um, and that's the reason that I showed you that power tip of bringing in the live camera feed as well. So they can see you and then they can see the annotations um, for a blended classroom, okay? Uh, that's really quite powerful. If you found that helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and turn on notifications. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.